Hello and welcome to C-Suite. I'm your host, Shawana Kennedy. I get to sit down with some amazing chief executive officers, the CEOs from around the globe in all industries where they give us a what? A look inside of some of the business that they run, right? Also, we get to look at and have a heart to heart and sometimes how hard it could be to be a CEO. I'm excited today that I get to go all the way to Ohio to look, we get to peek at it's tax season time, right? I'm excited to have Robin Boyd of Essential Accounting as my guest today. So let's get ready for a CEO chat. So welcome to the C-Suite. I'm Shawana Kennedy, and we're going to bring Robin Boyd right up. Hey, Robin. Hello, hello. How are you? Welcome to the C-Suite. I'm excited for our CEO chat today. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Let Thanks everybody know a little bit about you so we can jump into our chat because y'all, she busy. It's tax time. Very. <laughs> but I got to take out time for you. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and we'll go into the things that I can do to help you in your small business. All so right. the way that I got started was kind of by accident, but not by accident. So once I exited college with my degree, I thought that that piece of paper would afford me, you know, these high powered accounting positions with making all of this money. And I quickly learned, I think it took about a week that that's not the case. And that all of the experience that I had prior to receiving that degree um, is what was being looked at instead of that degree. But they teach you the other way around. So I took my piece of paper, that's what I call it, that's what the degree is to me, <laughs> and my experience, and I started my own business right after about, it took me about two weeks. And so in doing so, I learned by trial and error all through the first few years because I didn't have a resource to go to. I didn't have anyone that got out of school before me that was actually in accounting. You know, usually people go to school for um, a certain um, degree and then they go into something else after school. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of not the norm doing exactly what I went to school for. So um, I had to learn things by trial and error and seeking out um, professionals and mentors that I did not know. So it took me quite some time to do that. But after doing so, I quickly put things together um, while also working a position while building the business. So I was able to find an actual um, position that I said, okay, well, I'll go and do this while I'm building the business. And how long have you been in business? Since for 27 years. 27 years. That means yes. she's a senior. Look, look, she's. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yes. So after that, I'm sorry. No, I said 27 years in accounting. That means running numbers, right? I think that's amazing. So what happened after that? Um, I, I started the business as a tax preparation service. And over the years, I added other services that I saw the need for. And I have always reached, uh, I call it the low hanging fruit in my business. And that is like the underserved um, businesses in Ohio. And then I had clients moving around to other states then come back, then moving out of the country. So I have a heavy global footprint. And not just the United States, but also globally in different countries. So it's really been an exciting journey over the years. Um, but of course, as you know, it's not all peaches and cream. Yeah, no. So <laughs> you know, what, what is it that when you think about, you said 27 years of accounting, that's 27 mm -hmm. years of looking at numbers. That means you've been a part of times when, when businesses dropped off, right? That means yeah. you what it as an accountant you saw really literally the numbers of your clients uh during tax time and saw the decrease yes. how was that let's talk about that for a second when things really fell off because i know it has happened in 27 years you you've seen it you've seen it more oh, yeah. than a so lot of ups and downs during that those down times what does that look like for the business owner what is it that you can see for that well i mean you have to kind of have um a focus outside of what's going on at the moment. So, and when you don't do that, you're going to run into these situations where, okay, what happened to my business? 
yeah. and didn't prepare or did not look ahead. For instance, I knew that it was going to shift from um, shift from individual tax preparation to to helping more small business owners. I knew that was going to happen. So what I had to do was say, okay, I know it's really going to phase out in the next uh, 12 to 24 months. So I did that ahead of time. So I shifted more towards small business and got away from individual tax preparation, except for officers. So you have to continuously plan while you're working. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is the key. You have to have the planning time. And also you have to step away from what you're doing and come back fresh. So you have to have days, times, uh, maybe an hour every day, whatever your stepping away looks like, mm -hmm. you have to have that time where you can step away and come back fresh. If you don't do that, you're always going to be on this hamster wheel. And then you're going to hit the roadblock and you didn't prepare for so it. How have you been able to, since the pandemic, since the pandemic, how have you been able to help your, your CEOs? Because you're the accountant for other uh, six-figure, multiple six-figure, seven-figure clients. Those are your clients. So how have you been able to help them since the pandemic? Well, as you know, accountants are also first responders. Um, uh, through the pandemic, uh, I think it was said in several publications about accountants being first responders, kind of um, helping businesses stay afloat and, um, you know, kind of shifting their focus on different things and different avenues on how to stay afloat. So the type of businesses that I work with, I am also not just their accountant, but I am helping them transform the way they think. Because we're, we always think right here, this is what I have, this is what I'm going to have, yeah. and, and that's not so. So if you transform the way that you think, you can say, okay, we're in a pandemic. Everything is shutting down. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Um, then they had all of these different programs for businesses and you know, some people hadn't even filed taxes yet, didn't know this, didn't know that, what to even put on these applications. So um, I kind of package my services as quote unquote, like a first responders package to the pandemic for small businesses. This is what we got to do first. We got to get these numbers. We got to do this. We got to do that. And as a result of doing this and that, we will have this. And it was kind of put in phases and like I said, packaged. This is how it's going to go. And it just worked out really well um, during the pandemic. And I ultimately received a lot of clients because of it. Yeah, because I believe it even forced. I don't know what other accountants were doing, but I didn't know what they were doing. From some of our conversations, I know it forced them to even have to pause to take a look at how they were doing business. So oh, I believe with some of the strategies, you were then able to help them reset their back end. Yeah, reset their back end, but think, okay, not get in the pool of, oh, it's a pandemic. What are we going to do? Oh my yeah. God. Get out of that. No, this is how we're going to think. Okay. No, the pandemic, fine. It's going on, but this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And this is how you're going to circumvent anything else happening to your business so you can stay afloat. Now, what about a, a time in your business as you were, uh, building, right? When you think back over 20 years ago and, and stuff, uh, you know, life show up for you, how did that look when, when you might not have been getting certain clients right away? How was that? When you think about how hard it is in building a business, what, what, what did that feel like for you during the times when things weren't jumping off, when you weren't getting a bunch of referrals and didn't have a bunch of leads? What was that you recall that feel? I know it's been a while ago and I know you've yeah. been doing it for a minute. I know it's been a while. <laughs> I remember very vividly, actually. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure that was, if you don't mind. Okay, so I mean you kind of I kind of got down the well, the first time that, that happened to me, I kind of got very down on myself about you know business. And it was kind of like a oh, woe is me, what am I gonna do? What am I doing wrong? kind of thing. And I just had to keep pushing through that. And I became what is called a social butterfly. Okay. And I was so good at picking the events that where I can really network. And it wasn't just like, uh, you know, happy hour. 
and I would go there and I would casually meet other uh, potential clients instead of walking in the room with a business card. Here, this is what I do. This is what, well, oh, what do you do? You know, you just casually talk to people and then those things come out naturally. Um, so I was going to all these different events. And of course, you don't get clients right away. That's just not how it works in the real world. And um, sometimes I don't hear from people for two years and they say, oh, I remember I met you at such and such event and I got your card. I kept your card. So that's a very important to keep the same phone number. <laughs> mm, <that was> <laughs> And email address. Keep your domain and email address going. <laughs> but um, but right. yeah, so it was a hard grind, and and you have to spend in order to get. That's a very misconception that mm -hmm. this low hanging fruit. Oh, you saying something right there? If huh? I keep all of my money, then I'll have some money. I don't want to spend oh. it. I don't want to pay people to help me. You know, money, 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 money. <laughs> Yeah, that's the misconception. That yeah. is a, you have so, got I mean, it took sometimes. I mean, I'm trying to think. There was a period of time where it was a year or so before I could even really get that momentum going um, after I lost it. Mm. You know, different phases, right. things happen in the world. You know, when the mortgage crisis happened, you know, um, things just went down. So people fell off like, and it was just really bad. And I'm like, so oh, when you when you knew you said that you went through that period, mm -hmm. do you recall the time the same way you remember it felt like what that looked like? Do you recall right at the moment that you said you decided, to, of course, to no longer let it stop you? You dug deep and you said, I'm coming out of this. What did you do to bring yourself during that hard time as a CEO? What 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 are some of the things that you did to say, okay, we got to move beyond this? It's been over a year now. I got to do something different. Oh, good question. Um, I don't know when that turning point was, but just with anything, when you have been doing something for quite some time and nothing happened as a result of whatever it is you're trying to do, you say, okay, well. This isn't working. I got to try something else. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I, I ran into a gentleman. Um, I'm going to say his name, Art Butcher. <laughs> and he told me, he said, what are your goals? What are your business goals? He was part of my uh, power networking phase. And I told him and he said, well, you already have that. You just need to put that in a different way. You have exactly what you want already. Mm. And I'm going on my hamster wheel. Woo thinking that I'm getting somewhere, or, you know, and did and miss that I already had what I wanted. Mm. So that is why it's very important to have segregated roles in your business, because if you don't, and I'm going to keep talking about this hamster wheel, <laughs> if you're doing this every day, then you can't do this and this and this and this. So you give this person this and that and that and that. Everybody has their thing that they do. And then you can think and focus on what's right in front of you. It was right in front of me. It was right in front of you. So that's why what it's in, because, of course, the power of networking. You spoke to the power of networking, positive networking. Mm -hmm. You also spoke to the fact of having people around you that you really do they can see possibly some things that you just can't see. Yes. You spoke to what I believe is a person that you really, and you listen. Uh, I don't know necessarily, he might have been a mentor, but he still was a colleague that you actually would listen yes. at uh, the advice that he would give you to make you then lean into what you're possibly not seeing. So it's speaking to all of us as business owners to mm -hmm. be mindful of our surroundings, understand the power of, what the the whole the networking it mm -hmm. is it's about the people that's in your uh in, in your in your space right it's definitely is i believe you know we talk offline to even about things with energy and alignment right and 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 manifesting but we the station even requires a level of us doing something mm -hmm. it requires us to move to action when we do those things and 
I know that you're not like spooky and ooky, but you do understand the, the importance of centering yourself, right? The, the importance mm -hmm. of uh, setting aside time to then get work on the mind. You spoke a lot about even just the mindset. Mm -hmm. And as a CEO, we have to have a, a certain mind. And that what that I believe that's the turning point for a lot of CEOs to turn the corner from people who are right there, uh, possibly about to hit the six figure mark, or even those who, you know, you have clients in all tax brackets. How about that? Yes. Those clients that are on the verge, they 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 are comfortable in the six figure, but then it's like that what is it they need to do that one little minor thing the strategy that you're you're wanting them to do to make the transformation mm -hmm. so they can be a multiple six figure client right and it's the same thing for even your seven figure clients i'm sure because it's mm -hmm. always something else that we can constantly be doing as business owners as ceos as entrepreneurs to do better to go further to impact wider and it is it's all about the the people that we have around us that are actually, whether they're doing something, talking to us, feeding into what it is that we're doing to be a be a blessing, be a value add, mm -hmm. right? Instead of draining and taking away, because we do know that whole iron sharpens iron and, and tossing around the ideas and, and hashing out things that are going on in the business. Now, do you have who, when you think about it, if there's a book or a mentor or someone or something that you would even suggest for someone who's possibly doing it. And they're saying, you know what? Yeah, I already hit the six figure, but I wanna make multiple six figures. Or I'm right at that six figure. What is it that you could tell them? We talk about getting to the to the heart of it so that they can really move out of their own way. They saying, okay, my mind is, my mind is right. What else do I need to do to do that? Besides, of course, giving what? Essential accounting, a phone call. Yes, of course. <laughs> it goes without saying because I know, oh, wow. When I think about our years of, <laughs> oh, I can't even, man, you probably, you, I don't know. Is it, is it, look, have you, I been, know it's been at least 10 years. It's at least 10 years. It's yeah, least well, I, don't, years. I don't remember the year exactly, but I know I mean, at least 10. It's over 10. It's over 10. When I think about, you know, now anybody you know me, you know, I currently reside in the state of Georgia and we've been here for almost that time. So and you were you oh, were okay. yeah it was well before that then. Part of my number, part of part of her tagline is uh, allow her to run your numbers while you run your business, and I knew that I that's something that I had to do, and we talk strategy all the time to take, take you know go even bigger, mm -hmm. and yeah it's ooh ooh Robin now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. Let's not talk about how many years we're gonna reveal I our know. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. But then that still speaks to having a relationship and the having the right people around you that really can add value to what it is that you want to do outside of pleasure. What is it that what are the business goals? What are those things? And having that 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 sounding board, but yet somebody who understands the investment of it all. You said a few minutes ago, you spoke to about that you we, people have to get out of uh, not believing that they're they're you're gonna have to spend some money. You have to spend money to make money. You have to invest, and so I know because I know you gotta go. This is like I said, guys. She you is, should not do it yourself. You know that. Yeah, there you go. That's the thing right there. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about individuals who who believe they can do it themselves. How about that? It, in my experience, it seems as though they're. It's like people, client, potential clients feel like it's a personal attack against them when you're telling them what they, you know, what they should hire for. And they say, I can do that myself. I hear that over and over and over again all day. And it's not that you're saying that they cannot do it. It's that you should not do it. Because if you're doing accounting, which that's not your area, and if you're doing that and you're over here and you're over there, when, when are you going to have time again for planning? for growth. When, when will you have time for that? Yeah, for the scale. It's like keeping well, the You should not be working all day. Everybody thinks that their ca calendars are full and they got all this rushing around to do all day. That doesn't, that's not a CEO just because you're busy all day. That's mm. not a CEO. <laughs> the higher you get, the more you make and the less you do. Mm. Okay. So the, the busy bees that that's, that's not, what do they say? This is not that. <laughs> yeah, wow. So, 
I have some younger clients and I hear all these words all the time. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm just like, what do you mean by that? Yeah. And I know you, you <laughs> yeah. Hustling backwards. Yeah. So, hustling backwards. Yeah. And even hustling backwards mm-hmm. and working harder and not smarter. Mm-hmm. And, and I know you have that conversation with a lot of your clients. Yeah. I know. And, um, well, we we, we yeah. cater the services specifically to the needs of that person. So everybody's situation is different. Everybody's dynamic is different. So we don't put everybody into a mold. I have to have a conversation with you to see what your goals are, where, what you've done, what you haven't done. And once I help someone with their mess, whatever their mess is, then they all, all of their friends have a mess also. Yeah. And so this is how you keep that going. And then their friends have it and their friends and their friends and their friends. And so that's how that works. And you just become this tax resolution um, business person <laughs> overnight yeah. because there's so many people in distress. Because here is the honest truth. For some people, especially when we think about the last two or three years, a lot of new entrepreneurs, CEOs, business owners, some people really did literally blow up. They blew up in a good way. They blew up and certain things, you you don't know what you don't know. And it's wonderful having- Accidental a, entrepreneurs. Accidental entrepreneurs. Y'all hear that? Accidental yeah. entrepreneurs. And now they're in it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, whoa, now that I'm in it, now I got to kind of take a step back to make sure my back end and make sure those things are in order so that I can continue to be uh, up out front. If I'm the person that's leading, I need to lead, but then know how to delegate and have the right team around me. Mm -hmm. And in doing that is making sure you do what? Hire an accountant. Stop Mm -hmm. trying to do your books yourself and get uh, someone that is an expert in the area. And I already know, and I know personally uh, that Robin Boyd is her and her team, they are definitely the group of people that I personally have dealt with for ooh, almost a couple of decades now. And she has she hasn't steered me wrong. And and I'm I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that because you definitely need to have someone that know how to uh run your numbers so that I can continue to do what I do in my I can do look in my businesses. So mm-hmm. I appreciate you so much. So right before well, no we come at all. In this CEO chat, mm-hmm. I'm going to allow you to then whatever message you would like to say before we get out of this CEO chat. It's over to you. Okay. Well, out uh, to the small business owners out there, um, I just tell you very urgently to hire an accountant if you don't have one. And if you have missing tax years, get those filed as soon as you can through the same accountant and whatever... Um, that you're uh, running from, basically, I call it, uh, for the taxes that you're going to owe. Just get a good plan together before you file so that once those uh, bills start rolling in, your plan is already in place and you can move forward and you don't have to worry about that anymore. But it takes so much energy to do things the wrong way and it's so easy to do it the right way. And I'm just going to leave you with that. And if you need my help, my team will be more than happy to speak with you, go over your specific concerns, and we can help you out. And you'll see how simple it was, and we can move on with our lives. Thank you. I love it. So thank mm-hmm. you again. We are excited uh, to have had our special CEO, the accounting <laughs> uh, consultant with Essential Accounting. And she is. She, she knows her stuff. She, she knows her stuff down to earth. I love her. She has been a blessing to, to me and my life, my family. Mm-hmm. And I can't say enough. So make sure you get to know this CEO. <laughs> this CEO stepped off into the C-suite to have a CEO chat with me. And I am super excited. So thank you. for having me. Thank you. Okay. I got to get to my numbers. Oh, so thank you again, Robin. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of C-Suite CEO Chat. Excited to have had our guest, who? Miss Robin Boyd of Essential Accounting Consultant. And I'm excited. So what about you? Who else will we see soon in the C-Suite? All right, guys. Bye for now.